I've been thinking, I really don't like my portfolio that much. It was made on this platform called UXfolio. It was a platform that my UX bootcamp told us to use to design our portfolio. And I, I totally get why they had us use it. It's very simple to use. It's, it's very simple to add components. It kind of reminds me of Squarespace with its simplicity. And it even gives suggestions for what to include in case studies. But the one thing that it lacks a lot is customization. So every designer that uses UXfolio is going to have a very similar portfolio. And even though they have a large variety of templates to choose from, they also kind of all just look similar to each other. And there's nothing that really stands out. And while there are plenty of designers that get jobs using UXfolio, I just wanted something different. I'm not actively looking for a job at the moment, so I wanted to take the time to make a portfolio that is reflective of my brand and my personality. I wanted to take the time to create a portfolio that I can just intrinsically be proud of, and UXfolio just wasn't cutting it for that. So I decided to try something else. And so in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through the seven step process that I'm using to redesign my portfolio, as well as show you all the tools that I'm using to make it easier. So let's hop to my computer and I'll show you what I've been working on so far, as well as my plan going forward. Okay, so here are the seven steps that I'm using to redesign my portfolio. And the first thing that I'm working on is brand. And I'm starting with brand because I already kind of have an idea on what I want that to be. So I just wanted to flush it out a little bit and see what it looked like when it was mocked up. Now for me, I just try to keep brand simple. This is a personal portfolio, so it doesn't need to be anything ridiculously involved. I basically boiled it down to what do I like and what speaks to me when I look at different designs. And so I could really boil that down into two main components. One is dark mode. So I just naturally like designs that are in dark mode more than I do light mode. So I knew that I wanted my portfolio to be in dark mode. And then the second thing is I really love the color mint green or teal. And so I figured I'm just gonna make my primary color teal. And so that's basically what I did. And so from that, I created a mock-up using those choices. And I got a lot of help just designing this by using a, I, I borrowed kind of loosely from this portfolio here. Um, you can kind of see how it looks pretty similar. But the reason I didn't straight up use a Webflow template, because this is just a Webflow template that you can buy. But the reason I didn't do this is because it's not super customizable for the actual case studies. So if we go to one of the case studies here, they base the case studies using a CMS. And so the problem with this is that I found that it's just not super versatile. So it's very visual, as you can see, and it has some basic sections here. But the problem is, is that every case study is going to have a different design process. Obviously there's gonna be a lot of overlap, but there's going to be a little bit, there's gonna be differences here and there between case studies. And so because of that, it didn't make sense for me, at least in the way that I was thinking about it to use CMS, because there's gonna be, there's gonna to need to be more customizability and more versatility. And I didn't think that CMS would be able to provide that really well. Um, so in any case, all I did with this is just borrow a little bit of the design so that I could quickly uh, mock up something on here to see what that brand would look like. And instead of creating the brand colors from scratch, I again borrowed, or pretty much straight up used, the color palettes from Untitled UI. So Untitled UI is a Figma UI kit it has a ridiculous amount of components and things that you can use to design things a lot easier. So what I did is I looked through all through their colors, which they have a shit ton, and lo and behold, they have a teal, boom. So I just used 
their teal color palette, and then I combine that with their uh, default gray uh, neutral color palette. And so I use that to create this mock-up. And so this gave me an idea on what my brand would look like. And once I saw how this was mocked up, I was like, cool, I like this. So then I move on to the next step. All right, so step two is the homepage wireframe. And so I'm doing this just to give a skeleton on what my portfolio homepage is going to look like. And so to do this, I am creating it on Webflow, but I'm not creating all of this from scratch. So I'm using components from a tool that I've been really liking lately called uh, Flowbase. So Flowbase is a component library for Figma, Webflow, and Framer. And it allows you to basically just drag and drop or copy and paste rather different components straight into Webflow. So you can have real hi-fi designs that you can copy and paste like this. But what I was really using is that these are hard to customize and have a unified um, design system with. So what I did is actually I used their Flow UI section. So Flow UI uses all the same, uh, it basically uses the same style guide so that I can easily customize it and edit as I'm building out my web page on a Webflow. So again, I can just copy and paste these in the Webflow. And so I just dragged in different sections and I built out the wireframe of my site. Now, the reason I worked on the structure first and not the content is I didn't really know what kind of content I wanted on my homepage. And I found that if I dragged in sections, I sort of could envision what they could be later on. And so the main thing that I thought about with doing a portfolio is, is one of the ways to make it stand out is to treat it like a landing page. And so what I did is while I have my typical hero section and my project section, from then on out, it gets a little bit different. So I have sort of a why hire me section. And this is where, this is experimental, so I don't have any evidence to support that a portfolio like this is going to do better. But for me, I intrinsic, intrinsically just like it better. So I use very conversational language. I find that a lot of portfolios just use very corporate verbiage and it's just boring to read. So I tried to use very conversational yet still like, you know, mature language sort of. I'm not trying to be immature about it, but just I wanted something to that pops and that at least catches people people's attention. So hence why I have this quote here, well, kind of a quote from, <laughs> from Taken, Liam Neeson, if you caught the reference. And so anyway, I sort of just went through, so I have my about section. I made it a one-page uh, portfolio homepage. I had a testimonial section, and I kind of put this cheeky working with me can be as easy as reaching out, let's chat, let's boogie. Again, this could be a total flop, but to me, I just like it. It prevent it present if nothing else, it presents a human element to what would otherwise potentially be just another dry portfolio. And so that's sort of what I worked on is the structure of the wireframe first. And so a lot of these structures, like I didn't know what I was gonna do with this section here, but I imported the section and I sort of said, oh, okay, well maybe I can make this like a, a process section of hiring me can be easy as. And if I made the content first, I would not have known to do that. So sometimes the content, or in my case, a lot of times, the content and the structure can, can give me ideas on what I can put as far as content. Step three is homepage content. And I kind of talked about this a little bit in the wireframing part, but I wanna expand upon a framework that I used to develop the content of my homepage. And that is the three whom's of portfolio content, humanness, humility, and humor. So I tried to utilize these characteristics to make my portfolio stand out because the number one thing that I wanted to try to avoid is I didn't want my portfolio to be robotic. 
because I've seen portfolios where the verbiage is just so corporate. It just sounds so generic. And there's just, it sounds like just AI wrote it, just very generic. And so I wanted the content of my homepage to exhibit these. Now, this doesn't totally apply to the case studies. Those are just, those are probably going to be more robotic just because it's really hard to add a lot of personality to a case study. But at least when it came to my homepage, since that is a lot of times what the the only thing that a hiring manager is going to be looking at, I wanted to try to inject these elements in there. So humanness, uh, basically just making it seem like I am a human that has made this. So like in this section, I'm going to be having a video talking about the projects that I've worked on. And it's just going to be very casual. Again, be just I'm trying to portray the fact that, hey, this was designed by a human. There is a human behind this. And then as far as humility, you know, check out these cool projects. I'm not saying that I'm this badass ninja designer. You know, I'm trying to inject a little bit of humility, like, hey, like I've worked on some pretty cool projects. If you want to check them out, I'm not trying to boast or, or be arrogant about um, like my skill or anything like that. And then humor. So again, like I talked about before, like my little quote here or my section about, you know, reach out, let's chat, let's boogie. I'm just trying to inject a little bit of humor so that people know that there is a human behind this portfolio. And so obviously you can overdo this, but I think with what I've done, I think in my uh, personal opinion that it's tastefully done. It's not overdone. There's still enough serious content in here so that people can get a sense of my experience and what I can bring to the table as a designer. Step four is case study content. Now, I didn't really have to do a lot of this as far as actual copy goes, because I already have that in my old portfolio here. So really all I have to do is copy and paste a lot of that text over and maybe edit some of the verbiage of it that I don't particularly care for. So I didn't have to do that so much, but it, had I not done that, I would absolutely wanna do that first because that is the most arduous task of a case study is just writing out the actual copy of it. I think it's very helpful to just create a Google Doc and just write out what it is I'm going to say in my case study, irregardless of what the design of it is going to be. Because if the copy can tell a story without visuals, then any other design visual that I have will just add to that storytelling ability. And so, like I said, I didn't have to work on that so much because I had already done that legwork when I put the case study into my old portfolio. Um, but that is something I would definitely work on prior to the uh, wireframe. Okay, step five is the case study wireframe. So for this, again, I used a lot of flow-based components. And I forgot to mention this, but one of the big, actually biggest benefits of using something like Flowbase is their templates are already uh, responsive. So I don't even have to worry about that. They're already responsive. And so that saves a ton of time when it comes to designing. But in any case, I just needed to create some sort of a structure for, my, for each of my case studies. And so I tried to, at least as it stands now, I tried to limit the variety of my sections so that this can easily be duplicated and I can use it for other case studies down the road. So like more than likely, I'll have this sort of a hero section for each of the, um, for each of the case studies with a mock-up here. And I'll talk about how I get these mock-ups a little bit later in the video. And then having an introduction, problem solution, as well as tools used. Um, I actually used Lotties for these just to, again, just add some design flourishes. I don't have the tab open up here, but I used Icon Scout for that. Um, that has been highly worth the subscription. And just going from there, there's really kind of two main 
templates that I used. Oh, by the way, this I actually borrowed from UX Folio, even though I don't like UX Folio overall. One thing that I do like is the fact that they have a, a navigation section that's sticky to the top, so you can quickly navigate in between different sections of a case study. And so I don't have this program to be sticky at the moment, but that's something that I'm going to implement. But as far as sections, I really have a content left section and a content right section. And I just sort of alternate that as I go through. Now there may be scenarios where I will need a photo that's larger than what can be contained here. And so my options there are I can, is that, well, one of the options is I can make this a light box so that if they click on the image, it will expand into a larger image, or I can create a more centered design like I have here and then have an image below that. So in any case, I have just some flexibility with these sections, and it's also easy to repeat for um, different case studies. So like, for example, if I didn't work on competitive analysis, I don't have to have this in another case study, but I can use the same kind of layout for another kind of section. Like maybe I did a mood board or something like that. And so I'm just trying to make something that is fairly easily repeatable between case studies, even if my process is a little bit different. And then I have a um, this down here would actually, uh, where is it? And then at the very end, I have a reflection of what went well and what could be uh, improved upon. And I'll probably have a section down here that will quickly, uh, basically just some links to other portfolio pieces so that people don't have to go back to the project page or the main page. And so that is pretty much it for the wireframe part of the case studies that I'm doing. Step six is the homepage high fidelity. And I haven't done this yet, but just to walk you through what I plan on doing, so really all I'm doing with this is integrating the brand that I established from step one and integrating that into my wireframe here. So all the colors that you see here, these are just the default styles from Flowbase. And so I plan on changing all of this to be reflective of my brand. And so that's what I will do for the high fidelity part, as well as obviously add in all the missing content like a, um, a video here. Now I did put some high fidelity pieces in here already just because, you know, sometimes I just like to see how things look in a high fidelity sense. And so I already created some mockups. And so the way that I've created my mockups is I use Canva. Canva is really cool because if you go to the elements and if you type in mockups, there's actually an app called mockups. And so if I go to that, there's a whole slew of different mock-up ideas that I can use. So I can look at smartphones and I can see, you know, I can have people using the product. I can have it just a more minimalistic look and it has it for smartphones, tablets, computers. I mean, there's so much that you can do with this and it's really just a matter of just selecting um, whatever frame that you want and then you upload a screen drag it onto it and boom, and it loads it just like that. So you can have really professional looking mockups. And so that's what I've done um, for some of these thumbnails here. All right, and the final step, step number seven is to do the case study high fidelity. And honestly, this is really no different than step number six. So it's just a matter of applying the brand color and brand identity that I established in step one and integrating that into the case studies. Again, I already kind of did some high fidelity stuff like utilizing the, the Lotties here that I showed earlier, as well as kind of working on this navigation section already. But I have to just put in some of the images from my case study. And then other than that, it's gonna be pretty much good to go as far as that goes. And then I just have to be able to do this for my other um, case studies as well. But because Webflow uses classes, pretty much as long as I change the branding of a class, it'll, well, in theory, it should just carry over if I reuse that class for a different case study. So it should be fairly seamless 
to once I kind of create the hi fi version of this case study to be able to duplicate that and then adjust the content for my other case studies. Now, I'll be honest, it takes a lot more time to make a portfolio using this method. And honestly, if you're just trying to get a job as fast as possible, you may be better off just using UX Folio. Like I said, there are a lot of UX designers from my bootcamp that have landed high paying jobs using UX Folio. I just know for me, I personally just wanted something that was more reflective of my brand and my personality because I'm trying to look at things from more of a longer time horizon. And I knew that if I could have something that was more personalized, I could also create a section to offer freelance services or any other kind of offer, or maybe have a sister site that can share the same branding. And also, I think it's worth making a personalized portfolio because at some point, I would have to do it anyway. I'd never seen a veteran UX designer use UX Folio. They always have something custom and personalized. And so for me, it just makes sense to work on that now so that I can have something that I can be proud of that really showcases my work and can be something that can be easily iterated on in the future should I need to do so. One thing I'm thinking about doing as well is interviewing hiring managers to see what they look for in portfolios as well as to user test my portfolio once it's finished to user test it with hiring managers so that I can iterate on my portfolio so that it is really tailored toward them. And so once that is finished, I'll definitely be sure to share it with you. And then one other thing I was considering doing is uh, once my redesigned portfolio is finished, is offering it as a template. Uh, it would be free, not even like an email opt-in or anything. I would just give you like a download link and if you wanted it, you could just have it. Uh, I don't really know the process of doing that and I don't know if I am actually allowed to do that because I'm using components from Flowbase. But if I'm able to do that, then um, I would be happy to do that just as an act of human kindness. So if that would be something that you are interested in, just leave a comment below. And if you like this video, if you could just do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button, it would help me out a lot. And if you wanna learn my productivity system that I use when I'm redesigning my portfolio, as well as just trying to stay focused with any other task that is hard to start, then check out this video. It's a monster, it's a long video, but it has a lot of good nuggets that will absolutely help you stay more focused when it comes to doing hard work. And um, until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care.